you've got this thing called a slider. Um, it's almost like I know what I'm doing. Isn't it? And that goes all the way forwards like this. Okay. So now what you have here is the arch's fingers in iron. You're determined to fall out, aren't you? So there's your arch's fingers, which will grip the bowstring, and then that's the, it becomes the trigger that locks it in place. So you basically slide that forward, lock the string in, like that. So if I take it off the stand now, I'm just going to spin this around that way, so it's in Okay, there we go. Now you can see that the fingers are now clamped onto the string, the trigger's in place, and that's fine. Now with the belly bow, you place that end on the floor, and with your body weight, you push down. And as you push down, of course, this bit comes backwards and it spans it on a ratchet down the side to then span the bolt arrow in A and Q. This machine, however, we've gone from, I don't know, let's say, an 80 pound draw, 100 pound draw, 160, 700. So there is no way that I can pull that all the way back here. So instead, now what we've got is a winch or a windlass on the back end. And the idea now is, if I, if I just start moving, and then if you watch now, what's happening is we're using torsion power. So it's the twisting of the ropes in here that gives us the power to launch the missile. So as we crank the back, you'll notice the string is being pulled backwards. The arms are being bent backwards in, in, the, in the spring bundles here, which is twisting them even further. So I won't go any further because you shouldn't really miss it from that idea, but that's the, that's the trigger. This will come all the way back here. So now this bowstring is through here. The arms are being bent right back like this, and all of that twist is in there. So there's an awful lot of potential energy being stored in that point there. When you hit that trigger and release that, that spring bundle tries to return to its resting state, so it spins backwards, which drags the arm forward at speed, accelerates the bowstring, and the missile goes out through that gap there, and off it goes. Yeah. This one, one, that, one, be standing next to that this one is um, last year, about a year ago. Uh, we, we were doing, going through a shooting routine, cranked it about halfway back, and there was a crack, crack sound, and then something went whizzing past my face, and I thought, what was that? More importantly, what was the crack? And I stopped, and it was one of the little wedges on the back that had been pinged off because the bow arm here had split. And at that point, we've got a half-loaded weapon with a split arm, which we can't just release it because that could then just fly forward, shatter, and then come whizzing round going anywhere. So we had to sort of let it off very gently, and that was it. So these are new arms. It's already been chipped and everything. But, Romans are claiming uh, out to about 400 metres with machines like this, the catapulter. It's called a catapulter because it shoots bolts. We also know it as a three span because each one of these bolts is, that's a span. It's one, two, three. So it's about three spans long. So, and the machines come in different sizes. That's the smallest bolt shooter that the Romans had. Um, it was found. The other one that was on the bolt? probably was actually because this bit here this bit we call it the stock or the head uh, not the arms or, or most of this piece or the stand was found buried in the uh, in the mud Zanton. Uh, at Zanton where the river Rhine once flowed so it's obviously fallen in the river at some point covered over in mud the mud has preserved it the archaeology has recovered it and now we could build an accurate millimeter accurate representation of a, a machine from Xanton. That's what we tend to call this, a Xanton Ward um, catapulter. But it is still a catapulter, it shoots bolts. It works exactly the same way, exactly the same way. So catapulter can only ever shoot bolts. Stone throwers or ballista can do both. They can shoot balls or stones and you can put missiles in them. These two are just models. They're quarter scale. This one follows uh, the designs of an architect or engineer called Vitruvius, so it's known as a Vitruvian ballista. It's quarter scale, so you've got to imagine it four times bigger than it actually is. If you can't actually imagine that, you look across there into the corner of the field, 
there's one of your size. So this becomes that big beast over there which we'll be shooting later this afternoon. And it's only, this is the smallest stone thrower the army had. Uh, it shoots a ball about a kilogram in weight. So about the size of a grapefruit. In fact, that's what we shoot out of ours. Down there is a lot of grapefruits. <laughs> over there, shut it over there. In fact, that's the world's most expensive grapefruit juicer. Um, really good to make. Yeah. So that's a stone thrower. Uh, and, but you can use them with missiles. And you can imagine the size of that machine. It's about eight foot tall, nine foot long. So it's a big bolt you can get in there. The other one is also quarter scale, so they're they're of, of the same same, you know, same size. But this one is based on a find in Hatra in Iraq, and all that they actually found was the metal work that you see on the front here. Old wood obviously was rotted away, and it was found face down at what was the remains of the city wall. So the chances are this was up on the wall. Um, and maybe had been damaged or whatever and had gone over the edge and blended up and that's where it sounded. Now if you notice the difference here, you see how close these spring frames are, these spring bundles, they're quite close together. This frame, however, if you reconstruct it, moves them that way. And we think they've done this because it will give them a longer draw pullback and more, therefore more power. And in fact, the, 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 the ancient sources tell us that these patron ballistas could outshoot the Roman ballista. And in tests that we've done, that machine does indeed outshoot this one. So it's only small, small scale test models, but the, it does work. <coughs> there is, however, a, a competing theory that came around about late 1900, uh, late uh, 19th century, I think it was, or early 20th, uh, from French uh, academics who thought they've widened the frame so that instead of having the arms going that way, maybe the arms were pointing forwards, and what you did is you pulled the bowstring back, they did that. <laughs> and then when you release it, it flips forward. Right, so it's like the other call that we call that the in-swinging theory. So there is actually a third machine. I'm rather stupid if I didn't bring it with me. I know exactly where it is. It's bed bedroom upstairs. And it is it's configured exactly so it's the same, exactly the same size frame, but the arms operate in a different way. And the idea of course is to test all three of them to see which one works the best. At the moment it's that one. Because the inner swinger is, doesn't work, it doesn't shoot as well. It's either something we've done wrong, or literally the, the design is not as good as, as the proponents of it claim or believe. Um, but there is another thing we discovered as well. The in swing is very good at casting the ball, shooting the missile, and then as it does, as it comes forward like this, it gets to that point, and then the bowstring comes flying off as well. So not only do you hit them with a the missile, you also wrap a bowstring around their throats as well. But we're not, it's obviously not, not supposed to do that. But that's it, in, in a nutshell, that's the history of... Um, well, actually goes all the way to the medieval period, because these are still used. <laughs> the only difference is, in the medieval period, they called that a catapult and that a ballista. They swapped the names around. That's me, clumsy hands. I'm trying to break everything. <clears throat> I'm trying to break everything. No, not, just, just, not just your stuff, everything. Oh, it's interesting. Um There's, there's, there's very, they're actually amazing enough, and there's a lot of people who still do, you do slinging, and there are definitely different styles uh, depending on where you are in the world. Um, essentially, that is looped over finger, and then this bit is held normally between thumb and finger. The missile goes in there, so you actually, there's, there's lots of things you see it on the end. Of, you don't actually need to do that. You can do it sideways. You can actually just do one shot. You know, boom, I'm gone. It just depends because these come in different lengths. Different lengths. I mean, the bigger stone will need a longer sling. So it, they, they were pretty accurate, weren't they? Yeah, and, and they, you can get out to similar ranges as the bow. A bow uh, war bow is probably about 200, 250 meters. Slinger probably about 150, 200 meters easily. And you know, you can shoot a simple beach pebble. Nothing complicated about that. You find them lying around, you get it up, you chuck it. You get a lead Or the Glandies. Glandies, as they're called, the lead for slingshot bullets. These are reproductions, they're in lead, and you'll notice that they've got little designs on them. Because we do like to advertise. So that one tells you which legion sent it to you. I think it's the 12th, and it tells you who's in charge of it. 
Um, that one tells you which legion it's from. It's uh, the, the, the ferries, which is with the, the, uh, the iron clads, isn't it? So is that the tent? I think so, yeah. The yeah. Well. But they were obviously serving with Pompey the Great at the time, because it's got Pompey's name on it. That one is a lucky symbol, because it's got a phallic symbol on it, which is good, good luck and fertility. So they're wishing you good luck as they shoot at you. And this one is very, this is obviously designed for the intellectuals amongst your enemy, because this is written in Greek. And it says D E X A, Dexa, which means take that. <laughs> there is another one which I love. I'd love to get hold of a version or even make one. It actually says, in, in, I think it's in Latin or Greek. It just says, ouch. <laughs> You can imagine that though, coming through it like a bullet. You won't see it coming, and it'll be rattling off armour. Hope probably won't pierce it, but you can imagine hitting your helmet, and you're going to get some sort of concussion. But if you're not wearing a helmet, it's the shape of that, and it's digging into your skin. And now you've got this you know, lead bullet inside you. That's not so good.